Hey, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us this morning here at Red Brick Online with Niagara United Mennonite Church. Uh, my name is Chris, and I'm the pastor of uh, Youth and Young Adult Ministries here at the church, and we're excited that you're here with us, whether you're watching this uh, from our website or on YouTube or joining us from Pleasant Manor this morning. We're thankful that you're here. Hey, and a special shout out if you are here with us live right now uh, on Church Online. We're thankful that you're hanging out with us. Uh, COVID-19 is keeping us in separate buildings right now, but that doesn't mean that we can't still be uh, the church together. And so we would love to hear, if you're here this morning, if you want to shout out in the chat and let us know uh, where you're watching from, let us know you're here today. We would love that. Just because we can't be in the same building together doesn't mean that we're not doing church together in spirit. And so we'd love to hear uh, to hear from you. Uh, hey, if you're new here today, and a special welcome as well, uh, you'll notice in the top right-hand part of the website, there's a couple of links you can check out. There's an About link, which will take you to our website, so you can find out a lot more about us here at Niagara United Mennonite Church. There's a Contact tab, uh, so you can uh, talk with one of our staff members, find out more about us, maybe how to get uh, more connected with our church community. You'll also see there's a bulletin tab up there this morning. If you click on that, that will give you the bulletin for this morning, which includes information about what's happening in the church, contact information. Uh, just keeps you in the know with what is all happening in our community today. And speaking of information on what's happening uh, in Niagara United Mennonite Church, I've got a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. First, Life With Us is out. Life With Us is the publication put together and written by people in Niagara United Mennonite Church, telling stories of what we're up to these days, uh, telling stories of recounting things from our past. You can check that out online on our website at redbrickchurch.ca, live right now. Young adults, on Sunday, May 31st at uh, 7.30 p.m., we're going to be having a Jackbox Party Pack Games Night for young adults in our community. Uh, it's free to play. All you need is a phone, PC, or a laptop to join us. And if you'd like more details, you can contact me at chris at redbrickchurch.ca if you'd like to join us for a fun night together uh, with uh, younger people in our community. We also have Community Connection. Uh, you might notice in our services recently, we've had videos from people in our church telling stories of what they're up to during this COVID crisis, how they're keeping, how they're doing. We would love to hear from you uh, to do a portion for this video here on Sunday mornings. We'd love to hear you share about how you're keeping, uh, what you're up to. If you would like to participate in that, you can contact Ruth Willems at the email address provided in our bulletin. If you read our bulletin, you'll see the announcement there, and there'll be contact info there to let her know if you'd like to help us make a community connection for these Sunday morning online services. Hey, here's a picture for you. Do you remember? How many of you remember our community picnic last year in June? That was a great time where we got to hang out on the front lawn of the church and just have a great picnic together. Well, obviously, with COVID-19 happening right now, we can't gather on the front lawn of our uh, church building. But just like the COVID-19 crisis doesn't keep us from being church together on a Sunday morning, it also doesn't prevent us from being the church together doing a picnic as well. So we have some exciting news to tell you about. On June 14th, we are doing something called the Big At Home Picnic. And so we're encouraging everybody in the church that day uh, at 12 o'clock, right after our service that morning, to have a picnic in your home, whether it's in your house, could be out on your back lawn. Uh, we would just love for you to enjoy some food, have a picnic together with whoever else you might uh, in your place at that time. We would love for you to take pictures, post them on Facebook and on Instagram, along with the hashtag Red Brick Picnic. That's hashtag Red Brick Picnic. And if that's not enough, that day we're going to be doing a live stream from our Facebook page, which is going to have some uh, conversations with people in our church. Uh, some music is going to be played for us by people in our church as well, uh, just so we can get that real sense of being together as best we can in this time. We're very lucky that we have this technology that can bring us together. And so we would love for you to participate with us. And hey, if you know someone who doesn't have access to internet, how about bringing your phone to them and either playing them the video, which is going to be recorded of the picnic that day, or you can uh, let them watch the picnic live uh, from the phone that you have. Uh, it'd be great if we could bring as many people in as we can together to celebrate having a big at-home picnic on June 14th 
at noon. And one thing we'd love to do is if you have any recipes that you would like to share with people in the church, we'd love to hear your summer picnic recipes. If you have a recipe that you'd love to share with the church, uh, you can send that to me at chris at redbrickchurch.ca, or you can post it on Facebook, again, with the hashtag, hashtag redbrickpicnic. And we would love to hear your ideas. Let's try out some dishes on that picnic day. Have some fun uh, just trying something new, posting pictures of us trying out these recipes. Uh, we just want to have a lot of fun together on that day and try and make the most of the times that we find ourselves living in. That's enough for announcements from me. I'm going to lead us in a call to worship, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to head into the rest of our content this morning. We've gathered together in the presence of God to offer our praise and our prayers. We come before God with confidence, knowing that even when we can't find the words, God's own spirit is right here with us, praying in us and for us, giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings, and pleading for us before the throne of grace. So let's come with joy to offer our worship to God who knows and loves us all. Let's pray together. We pray this day, O oh God, for those in transition, for those getting married, for those with newborns and infants and toddlers and preschoolers, and elementary age children and tweens and high school aged youth, for all the transitions of parenting and of growing up, for graduates finishing and preparing to begin something else, for those who have been diagnosed, for those awaiting surgery, for those in treatment, in therapy, in recovery, for those in hospice, for those in grief. Recognizing that we are all in truth in transition from what was through what is into what is yet to be. And so we pray for liminal time, for the good and the hard gifts of thresholds that they might be for us a thin place, a thin time, so very fleeting and yet eternally full of your presence, our God. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who was and is and will be with us. Amen. Hi everyone, um, it's myself, Alex, Melissa, and Lucas Froze, and this week's Community Connection will be sharing what's new with us during this COVID period. Um, life is fairly same for myself as the manufacturing sector was not shut down, so it's work as usual and busy home life. And uh, the only thing that has really changed is the social aspect where we're not going out uh, to see friends or date night. Um, also not able to skip over to Penner and pick up what you need. Um, so those are a little bit frustrating, but uh, all in all, we're doing well. Melissa? Um, yeah, it started off, uh, I was home with Lucas full time because uh, we didn't have daycare, um, so that was difficult. Being home all day taking care of a toddler is a lot harder than going to work. <laughs> so um, while I'm enjoying, I've been enjoying this one-on-one uh, -on -one time with Lucas before our baby comes in July, um, it was also just a big change really quickly for us. So since then, um, this week I've been back to work because we have babysitting for Lucas now, which has been really great for me. And Lucas has really enjoyed it as well. Um, so right now it's kind of back to life as usual for myself as well. Um, except of course for the social aspect. Um, Girls nights have been on Facebook video chat rather than uh Lucas say hi. Cheese. <laughs> rather than in person, but Lucas, luckily we have uh our uh luckily Lucas isn't 
old enough to really notice much of a difference and we don't haven't had to explain anything to him, which has been great. Um, like how parks are closed <laughs> and he can't play with his friends. He doesn't really understand that. So that's been a blessing. Um, and I haven't had to do any homeschooling, which has also been a blessing. Uh, so we've mostly just been playing all day. Um, grateful that the weather is nice now so we can go outside and play. Lucas loves being outside. Um, he's loved going on lawnmower rides with Alex outside. We've really been making the most of a difficult time. Um, okay, 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 okay. Can you say bye? Life is good. Can you say bye? Okay. okay. Life is good, and uh, we hope that we can gather again soon. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Hello again, everybody. It's good to see you all again. I heard that a lot of you really enjoyed our video that we made a couple weeks ago and we had fun doing it so uh, we're gonna do it again and uh, we might keep doing it for a little while who knows so here it is selfie cam jam number two hope you enjoy it who lied that the highest king would well But he brought me in all oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
everybody. I'm so glad that you could be with us today. I have a children's story for you. First, I have a verse to read to you. It's from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worry, pray. Let's petition, praise, and shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. When I'm worried or I need to think about something, I love to come to a place like this. I love being out in the woods. The crisp air and the leaves between my, under my feet. And I feel relaxed and at peace. And I can think, and I can pray and talk to God about my worries. But what happens when we have worries in our life? What if we carried them with us like a rock? Oh, I can't find my favorite stuffy. We ran out of Oreos. You know, important problems. I haven't been able to see Oma for a little while. It'd be like carrying all these rocks with you everywhere you go. And eventually your arms get tired and your back gets sore and you can't walk. So I need to let go of them. And to let go of them, I need to pray. So I pray to God and I ask him to help listen and take my worries away and guide me. Do you want to say a prayer together? So let's pray. God, please be with us and hear our prayers and guide our thoughts so we can let go of our worries and walk a peaceful and relaxed path. Amen. What do you think I should do with all these worries that I have? I think I should toss them. I know the perfect spot to toss them. Right down here at the edge of the lake. Goodbye, worry one. Goodbye, worry two. Goodbye, worry three. Oh, I feel so much better. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a really relaxed and peaceful week. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it, Take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 to 2, and 10b to 11, and Romans 8, verse 22 to 25. Pastors Long, Earth 8, 2020, 05, 24, week 9 of the COVID lockdown. We've returned to full rations. It's been a highlight. The pickles are coming. Hold on. good that grocery stores are back in the business of selling food we need. Strangers continue to greet each other in passing. Indecisive April is turned into indecisive May. Leaves and lawnmowers keep turning and falling and coming out. So I guess that means that spring is arriving. I've even seen some swans starting to nest. So I guess things are looking up. They don't seem to mind. Carbon emissions, I read, are down, according to the recent reports. And it looks like soon economy, different sectors of our economy are going to start. Physical distancing, still in effect. Worship services still do not continue to happen indoors, still, still via online communication. So, conclusion for this week, life is good, although parts of it leave much to be desired. Physical distancing is kind of sucking, but I guess that's the price we pay for our health at this time in this season. 
hopefully our current normal will soon go away and we'll be into or we'll enter into a new normal which won't be as annoying or frustrating at times still waiting for the situation to resolve itself so we can return to normal this has been the pastor's log we'll check in again next week oh let's see if the sun has come up oh yeah it's going to be a great day today i think if you were to write your own log, what would you put in it? What would you highlight? What would be some of your pros and cons that you've experienced in this COVID-19 season? What are some of the things that you've started doing or stopped doing? Are there some things that you've enjoyed about this season? What are the things that you found challenging? What are the things that you would like to continue on doing after this is all blown over? What have you found challenging? Or has it been easy for you? What things have you really enjoyed about this time in this season? Can we also be grateful in spite of our challenges that we are facing? Can we be grateful for our challenges? And what does it mean to be grateful, to have gratitude? Well, the definition of gratitude, as I looked it up this week, says that Gratitude is the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Gratitude is expressed or showing thanks, appreciation for something. And I think that would make sense to all of us. Now, if I'm really thankful to someone or for, to, for someone for something, I think the most natural response is to want to show appreciation or thankfulness, to acknowledge what has happened. I don't in my mind say, oh, she has done such a wonderful thing for me. It means the world to me. I should just not say anything, not mention anything, pretend like she didn't actually do anything at all. That, I think, would be probably quite an unnatural response to have. Of course, when we are thankful, we want to express our thankfulness. We want to show it whether in words or in actions or with a gift. Sometimes we'll want to come up to someone and say, thank you so much for what you've done. Other times we might want to show it our appreciation or thanks in action, a hug, a kiss, maybe a slap on the back, or maybe one of those awkward shoulder rub things that people like to do sometimes. Or maybe our MO is giving a gift. You know, maybe some flowers or chocolate, a bowling bomb, bowling bomb, <laughs> bowling ball, monogram towels, or a baking, or a meal, whatever it is that you naturally like to express your thankfulness, it is natural to want to express your gratitude to someone for something that they have done. And so I'm left with a question or asking myself can someone express gratitude without giving? Or desiring to give? Can someone who is thankful show their thankfulness without doing anything? I don't think so. I think for gratitude to be gratitude and for thankfulness to be thankfulness, it needs to be expressed. Now, it can be challenging at times, and I think during this COVID season, it is more challenging maybe to show our thankfulness or gratitude because of the physical distancing that we are supposed to keep. But I still think that there are many ways that we can show gratitude and to show our thankfulness, especially in times of challenge. I think it is actually in our times that are challenging or the difficult times in our life that actually show our true character and show our true faith as well. It is when things aren't easy that who we really are comes out. Are we a grateful person or not? Can we be grateful in challenging times if we've never been grateful in good times? If we're not grateful now, have we ever been grateful? And I keep wondering if we as Christians especially should be the grateful people in the world. Because after all, our gratitude lies in the fact that God has saved us from sin and death, 
apart from anything that we could have done, anything that we have done. We've been saved by grace, apart from anything that we have done. And this should cause us immense gratitude and thankfulness in our lives. And so as I think about that, I wonder if there is a connection between gratefulness and faith. Can you have faith without gratitude? I'm thinking, no. I'm not so sure if you can have faith and not be grateful. Since our very faith stems from being grateful to God for what he has done in Christ. We are Christians, after all. Our whole sense of identity is wrapped up in the Christ event and our expression of thankfulness and gratitude stemming from that. So if you have fallen into a bad habit this last while or maybe some time ago of being unthankful or ungrateful, is there any help for you? Or is there any help for us? Of course. Of course there is. And I think it's easier than we think. And this is why I think the festival or the celebration of first fruits is a perfect model to help us get there. Let me explain. The celebration and practice of bringing some of the first fruits of one's harvest to the temple as an expression of gratitude and as a practice of gratitude is to help us learn to be grateful and to express our thankfulness. You see, every year at the beginning of harvest, the Israelites were to bring some of their first produce, the first of their crop, to the temple and to bring them before God as a thanksgiving offering. They were to bring a basket and bring it to the temple or at the beginning at the tabernacle and bring it and lay it before the Lord and then to worship, rejoicing in all the good that God had given them and all the good that God had promised that he would show to them yet. It didn't matter if you felt like it or not. It did not matter the size of your first fruit. You were expected to come and to offer to God that which he had given you, at least a part of it. And it was not just that people came and they dropped off their offerings. They were also required to make a declaration. They would rehearse this to remind themselves of why they were rejoicing. And here's what they were to say. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 5b to 10a. And I also want you to listen to see how the language changes around the celebrant. So here we go. It begins, A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, a great and mighty populace. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. And we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with great deeds of terror and with signs and with wonders. And he brought us into a place and gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first fruits of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. Did you catch the way that it began with Abraham in verse 5, and then switch to we in verse 6? And then in the way that in verse 10, it went became I? It went from Abraham entered the land, or it went down to, went down to Egypt. And then God heard us, heard our cry. And now I respond to what God has done. This story would have never actually been literally true for anybody actually making this statement. Because the exiles who actually came out of Egypt actually died in the wilderness. And those who entered the land did not know life of slavery in Egypt. And so they're entering into the land of Canaan. They would have made this declaration as a statement of faith that has that arrived or came out of their forefathers' experience. And this would have continued generation after generation, continuing further and further along as people got even further away from the Exodus moment. And yet they still declare 
that we were saved, that God rescued us. And it wasn't just that it was Israelites that were called to make this statement. Sojourners who also lived in the land could also make this if they desired to bring their first fruits, along with anybody else who would have been grafted into the family of Israel. The people were to bring their first fruits and to give thanks, even hundreds and thousands of years after this Exodus event and God gave them the commandment. They were still bringing their offerings and declaring these words with their mouths, declaring, these words are true of me today as they were true of my forefathers and ancestors generations and generations ago. The festival was there to remind the Israelites to be grateful and to help them practice gratitude and saying thanks since they were all beneficiaries of the Exodus event of God rescuing their grandparents or forefathers for parents from Egypt and establishing them in the land of Canaan. And it's interesting, I find, the way that Paul picks up on this theme in Romans as well. The way of posterity giving thanks for an event that has happened in the past. As the Israelites groaned under slavery, so Paul says that we also groaned under sin and death. And just like the Israelites waited for God to come and rescue them, to make them children, so we too have waited for the Christ event. Although we is a historical we that goes back 2,000 years, which we still celebrate today. Paul says those who have become followers of Jesus have become first fruits in the Spirit, children of freedom, much like the children who walked out of Egypt those many years ago and made their home in Canaan. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have been incorporated into this story and are recipients of all the benefits that derive and that come from that moment 2,000 years ago. So when, so when should we be celebrating our first fruits? Well, I think Sunday is a great time. On Sunday, on the first day of the week, Christ was raised from the dead. And so we as Christians continue to celebrate the rising of Christ from the dead by gathering to worship on the first day. That in coming together in the morning, we come to see and to acknowledge that Christ has risen on that first morning. And if we wanted to succinctly tell our story the way that the Israelites told their story when they brought in their offerings, I think Paul's words from 1 Corinthians 15 verses 20 to 23 are quite suitable. Let me read them. <coughs> Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by one man death came, so by one man also came the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then those who belong to him at his coming. We are the first fruits offerings of God. We should set our first fruits of offerings before God and rejoice in song and in word. We come on Sunday mornings and we bring our offerings and we also worship our God and King as acts of our gratitude and thankfulness for him, for the work that he has done for us in Christ and the work that he continues to do for us every day. James says that good, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And so, if this week, if you want to practice up on being grateful or thankful, I have two suggestions for you. The first is at the end of the day to reflect upon your day and all the things that have happened and all the things that have been good and glorious in this day and to give thanks for them. Take five minutes to do this and maybe say, Thank God for five things. And I would encourage you to do this aloud. There's something special that happens when we verbalize our thanks, when we verbalize what we are thankful for. I would also encourage you to be as specific as possible. I thank my mother for providing us with pierogies. That's pretty awesome. There's also a second thing that you can also do to help practice being grateful. 
And that is by expressing your gratitude through other ways or other means of verbalizing your thanks to your neighbors, to your family, by giving actions of gratitude, whether probably not hugs in this time and season, but you can also do it through gifts, as I mentioned before. The acts of showing appreciation also help us to learn and to know what it is to be grateful. There is there's a way, or people often say that mind over matter, that what we think has an influence on our body, but studies have shown that our actions, the things that we do with our body, also help inform the way we think and what we believe. There was a Harvard study not done, well, some years ago, in which characters or people were asked to do power poses before interviews. And they had two groups, those who did power poses, which is putting your hands over your head or standing with your hands on your hips, and a group that was not to doing power poses. And those who did power poses were more confident, came out more confident in the interviews. And this should not be too surprising to us. The vernacular of this is fake it till you make it. The person that we want to become is the person that we should become. Let me try that again. The person we want to become is the things that we want to do, we should start doing. If we want to be grateful, then we should start acting grateful. Then we should start behaving like grateful people do. And so, two practices for you for this week. If you want to practice and want to become more grateful. So, in conclusion, why should we give? Because that is what it means to be grateful. And to be grateful is to be a child of God. I want to thank you once again for coming and joining us here this Sunday morning. And I ask that God would fill you with a blessed, thanks-filled week. And before we go, I would also like to offer a word of blessing upon us. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not give to God offerings that cost us nothing. Let us go in peace to love and to serve. And may God, three in one, make us a blessed and grateful people, ever more so, every day. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.